What's going on everybody? It's your boy Shad and today I'm excited because we have a classic to talk about and it's the home edition of the Air Max Penny 1. First and foremost, if you have not yet subscribed, make sure to do that. If you like the content that I'm putting out, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button on your way out as well. The Penny One is definitely a top tier sneaker, one of the most iconic silhouettes of the 90s. You know, the signature shoe from Anthony Penny Hardaway, and then also some of the best Nike ad campaigns ever. Back when I was in, I think fifth or seventh, sixth or seventh grade, these had dropped. I think it was seventh grade, these had just dropped. And only the cool kids, only the ballers, only the ones that were the hoopers were, were rocking these. It was always the Orlando colorway. Everybody always had the Orlando colorway. I never saw too many people with these. Matter of fact, I believe this is the first time this particular colorway is being retro. And that's why I'm so excited about this because I remember seeing Penny rocking these on the court, but I didn't see this colorway on people's feet. And so, you know, to, to be able to get my hands on these, it's a beautiful thing. So the Orlando colorway did drop yesterday on a few websites. I missed my chance to get them. I had my alarm set, I was ready to go, but I overslept on them and then woke up, found out that they sold out like that, especially in my size. And you know, I'll get my, I've had them before. So I, I will, I'll eventually get my hands on them again. I've owned them in the past when they retroed. Uh, but this, again, this being the first time that this colorway is retroed, I, I wanted to make sure I had these first. And uh, not disappointed. Some of the specs of the sneaker, you've got this full phylon midsole that goes around, wraps up to towards the upper of the sneaker, which I've never seen on the shoe. It's more prevalent on some of the other colorways because it's usually in white and then you have some kind of offsetting color on the upper itself. You've got the visible air unit in the heel. Now, one thing about it is I miss those old original air units, which were a little bit more chunkier. I do wish that Nike would bring those back, but you know, the fact that they keep things close to the original is, is fine with me. I can deal with this. The Air Max Penny 1 was designed by Eric Avar, who was an understudy of Tinker Hatfield. And he's actually got a pretty exquisite resume for Nike, including these, my all-time favorite sneaker, the Zoom Flight 95s. You've got the Air More Up Tempo and a lot of that mid 90s basketball styling comes from him. So, uh, you know, he get, he should get some credit for, you know, some of these amazing creations here. As I inspect this shoe, I do see that it does contain genuine leather, albeit it feels a little thin, but leather nonetheless, I can dig that. And then you've got a jeweled swoosh on the toe. The interesting thing is that the toe box is so short from that lace, from that bottom lace to the actual tip of the, of the shoe. Like it's really short compared to other sneakers that I've seen in the past. You've got this rope or nylon ribbing going through the upper. You got this satin outline going across the shoe, which I don't like because that tends to pick up dirt real easily and stain real easily. So you definitely gotta protect that. You got a speed lacing system on the shoe you know, which I think is cool. Also, these were one of the coolest shoes. Like when you talk about how to style your sneakers, like this is a, this is one of the coolest shoes to wear unlaced. Like I always thought like, let the laces hang, just chill, throw them on, slide them on, and you're good to go. The only thing about that is these run, these fit weird actually. I wouldn't say they run big or small, they fit really weird. And the reason why is because, you know, it's really tight for me particularly around the toe but then when you get to the heel, it's super loose. And there's not really much padding going on back there. And, you know, it's like a, it feels like a boot, but it's not like really a boot. It's like a two piece, the tongue and the, and the heel, but it always, the heel always slides when I'm walking. 
it always slides up. So I have to lace up the sneaker to get some kind of stability, you know, when I'm wearing these. And I don't feel like I can go a half size down because of the problem, you know, around the foot, the, the toe area. If you were asking how should you rock, I would say you definitely have to try these on. If you can go true to size and rock that in the heel, you're good. If you lace up your sneakers, you might not have a problem. But I just say just be cautious about like the heel because if you get true to size, that is a thing where it lifts when you walk and it's like an Air Force One almost, but an Air Force One, you can go comfortably a half size down. These, I'm not too sure about, but I, I did pick these up true to size. I have tried these on and it's the same thing as I've had with the other uh, penny ones where it's that heel, you know, lifting situation. I love the tongue with the, the paneling here. If you look at the old Orlando Magic jerseys, it's got that same kind of pattern going on here. You've got the vertical swoosh on the tongue here with the leather patch, and then you've got the dual pull tabs. The jeweled swoosh there with like with the lightning going through it, you know, which was also a really good touch. The interesting thing I'd also say that I didn't I didn't mention before is that on the midsole in the past is usually a lot more hard, more sturdy. On this version, it's really soft. It's actually really soft. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to change how, you know, they wear long term. But that's just something that as I was inspecting the sneaker and I'm pressing around, I don't remember it being this soft and easy to press on. I instantly go back to 1995 when I look at these. I can think about the Nike ads. One the old school ads with the phone numbers that you can call. I think these were one of the first ones that had that. And you know, th whoever was running the ad campaigns back in the 90s, man, for Nike, just, they deserve a walk of fame star. Like it was just, I, I was seriously, I would be at home calling these numbers, just listening to these athletes talk about the technology on the shoe which i thought was just the coolest thing and it and it really was just like i gotta have that shoe i gotta have that shoe and then of course little penny you know with chris rock doing the voice some of the best ads you know nike ever came out with and you know i will say I, i'm putting this penny signature line as a top five signature line all time. He didn't have that many pairs of sneakers, but every single one, I, I own every one. As far as what he played in, I own one through four. I have every single one of those pairs. I have fives as well. Phone posits, of course. I mean, come on. I'm gonna say that this signature line, Penny signature line is definitely the dopest. Now, what's my favorite Penny? Uh, I think that the Penny three is up there for me just because it's my introduction to foam posit that, that that technology you know and it's it's oddly placed on the shoe but the more that i wore that shoe i can see that it was broken in and it felt really comfortable over time the penny twos are really dope as well i, I love the penny twos but matter of fact scrap that all of them are my favorites i love the penny line and these in particular, again, I'm so happy to have in the collection. Post your thoughts, man. Let me know. Please post a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about the Penny Ones. What do you think about this colorway in particular? How can I forget the logo? Come on, the Penny One logo, that one cent. Genius, bro, genius. That logo is iconic. Like. I'm, these are going straight to toe. You might see this on an Instagram pic. If you guys actually don't even follow any of my, my social media, I'm on Instagram. Um, so the name is Best Foot Forward on Instagram. It's B E S T dot F O O T dot F W D. There's actually a reason behind the Best Foot Forward name. And I'll talk about that in a future video. And of course here, subscribe to the channel. You know, I'm definitely putting in the work here. It's fun for me to be able to get back to talking about sneakers regularly and sharing my passion. And that's what I think it's all about, man. And, and I talk about that all the time. You know, the love of the sneakers. It's not about the market value, resale value. You know, I, that kind of stuff, that doesn't move me. I don't like talking about that kind of thing because, you know, at the end of the day, 
you know, it, it is what it is. They're just sneakers. If we want to talk about it, the value that we put on sneakers should be our own, not what's dictated by outside forces. If you like the sneaker, buy the sneaker. It's the nature of the game today. Everything happens. There's seasons into this, but you know, me being a, one of the old heads in, in this, you know, this is, for me, this is what it's about. Like, I get excited about this kind of stuff. I don't, a collaboration's cool, you know, I can dig it, but, you know, when you bring out the stuff from the vault, like, it instantly rekindles those emotions, those feelings, those times and places that you were at. And, you know, these are there. These are there. And I'll stop blabbing. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm rambling on, man, but I'm just like, Thank you guys again. I appreciate every one of you. As always, I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all be easy. Peace.